Hi everyone, this is Freddy with Superbike Unlimited and we're gonna be bringing you another update on our ZX10 RR Superbike project today. We just got back from our second uh, test with our professional rider, Jason Aguilar, and um, it was a, overall a pretty productive test. We got a lot of work done on the motorcycle, um, set an unofficial lap record with a um, normal race tire, and uh, work through a lot of stuff to further just get Jason comfortable and, and, and uh, feeling good on the motorcycle. Unfortunately, uh, our last session of the day, we decided to put on a soft tire and go for a, a really fast lap and try to smash the lap record, which we were looking like we were gonna do by well over a second. Um, we had a big issue. Jason went into turn one at uh, Carolina Motorsports Park and uh, in braking, had the bike um, step out a bit, the rear end, which then caught the grass. And when that happened, he essentially lost control of the motorcycle. And it went sailing in through turn one into a tire wall, cartwheeled a few times into, uh, uh, I think a, over, the, over the tire wall into a porta potty and into some trees. So yeah, we had uh, some highs and then some lows. This is kind of, kind of gives you an idea of what we're, what we're looking at. This is one of our rear wheels. These are very robust units, and obviously this thing has just been completely smashed in. Um, so that's kind of where we are. Today is Monday. We are doing uh, basically some damage tallying. We do have quite a bit of, uh, of work to do. A lot of stuff's damaged on the motorcycle. We for sure have, uh, right away, it looks like there's some, some potentially some, uh, the frame has been tweaked. We have to replace some forks. Um, wheels obviously are completely smashed in our bodywork which is very expensive you got a few people have asked by the way that was kawasaki that was basically krt stuff so it's you know not something that we're selling right now if we did sell it it would be very expensive that that bodywork kit was five or six thousand dollars or something like that so including the monocoque tail so it's not exactly a practical uh kit for most people and obviously you know for us you know it's an expensive thing to crash so yeah, had a lot of stuff. Exhaust got smashed up a little bit. I think uh, some of it is still salvageable. Our uh, our Superbike spec cooling system was damaged. So quite a bit of stuff has, has been destroyed. We have, uh, on the on the plus side, we did have our new A-spec engine and it was running very strongly. Um, we are gonna actually put that back on the dyno at some point once we get the bike put back together and see how it looks after some uh, track time. Usually they break in a little bit better and come up on the dyno, so it'll be interesting to see what kind of power it's at. But right now we're we're kind of in a, a difficult spot because we are supposed to be racing in about two weeks and we do not have spares for all this stuff. Some of the things we do, some of the things we don't. And some of the things that we don't have, oh yeah, the triple clamps are also destroyed, which is a key, key issue here. Um, some of the things like the clamps, we cannot get quickly. Um, and some of the other things we also may not be able to get quickly. We're gonna try to buy another frame and um, we are going to try to get some replacement parts for the Olin's forks that are smashed up and see if we can get those dialed. If not, we may try to use a different fork, we'll see. But that's where we are. And unfortunately, we did have a GoPro on the front of the bike, but it's long gone, there's no telling where it is. Um, so I have no footage, no stuff from the track, all that's gone. Um, so we're just kind of starting from scratch and unfortunately it's just story time because you don't get to see or, or hear anything about it from the actual racetrack. So. That's where we are. We're in the uh, rebuild process. I'm gonna go over here and we'll show you a little bit of the bike. It's still very dirty. Um, let's, yeah, this is kinda, kinda where we are right now. Definitely a uh, bit of a mess. So hopefully in, uh, in due time, we can get this thing back on track and, and uh, hopefully we'll see you at the racetrack. We do have some plans to race this motorcycle and right now we're just doing everything we can to make that happen. We're gonna Hope some of the people that are working with us are gonna step up and help us uh, get this thing sorted out in time. So that's all I've got for you on this one. Um, we'll keep you guys updated. Thanks for coming along with us. I'm sorry we don't have the riding footage. I personally really wanted to see it because I can tell you um, he was going really well there. It, it, just from the side, it was really fun to watch. I didn't get to see any of the, the riding footage. So, uh, but it, it, looked, it looked pretty spectacular from the side of the racetrack. Everybody was uh, commenting about how the bike sounded and how quickly he was going. And we found some more progress and improvement in the electronics and just in terms of some of the shifting and the way the engine braking was working overall strategy stuff had the bike working really well so 
it's a shame to live to end the, the weekend on a low note like that, but uh, we made really good progress. Unofficial lap record is cool. And hopefully we can come back at you guys with some more positive news soon. All right, so we're chipping along and, uh, or chipping away, I should say, at this rebuild process. And we are finding that a lot of stuff to be expected is basically completely wrecked. So what we're doing right now is basically just full disassemble of everything, uh, cleaning of everything, and obviously a close inspection of practically everything on the motorcycle. So, and as part of the process, we're replacing all of our bearings, like those in the swing arm here, which was overdue for a cleaning anyway. We've gone ahead and replaced everything there in the steering head. Um, literally any bearing on the motorcycle, wheels, all that stuff, we have to replace because when there's a big impact like that, it's possible that you get a flat spot on either a bearing or a race. So we have to sort all that out. And then um, right now it's kind of a waiting game. We've also found that we had some... Uh, since we have this downtime, we had some leak down on our cylinder head that we sent off that we really weren't very happy with. Um, you know, it wasn't huge, but it was beyond what I would really want. And uh, so while we're waiting on stuff, we've gone ahead and sent this off. And uh, uh, a friend of ours has agreed to basically turn it around really quickly for us. Um, so that's going to be a really cool way. So what we need to do is a valve job what is what uh, what that means. And also with this incident, you know, dirt and stuff gets into the air box. So it's better safe than sorry. Um, but we have quite the damage tally so far. We've had our, our clamps are smashed. And I know some of this I've already touched on, so forgive me if I'm being repetitive. But clamps are smashed. Uh, oil and water cooler smashed. Obviously, all of our carbon body work and stuff. Um, wheels, forks. Um, gosh, I don't even remember everything else. It's a lot of stuff. <laughs> We're replacing our frame, uh, which I'll show you. We've actually got a brand new frame in. The, the old frame may be straight, but the uh, inlet has a small tweak in it. So we're just going to play it safe and, and go ahead and pop a new one on. There's that. And uh, yeah, we're just, uh, you know, chipping away at this. So right now, the biggest issue is that we don't have spares for everything. Like I mentioned before, we don't have spare clamps. Those were kind of special one offs. And uh, we had to express several components in from Sweden and uh, Italy, UK, lots of stuff. So unfortunately we don't have all these spares and the reality of racing a super bike is there's going to be weekends where this kind of thing happens. And, you know, while we would love to have extras of everything and, and ideally multiples, um, it's just one of those things where we're not really set to do a full season yet. We don't have that level of support and we can't, you know, it's very expensive just to build one of these things costs a fortune and then to maintain it and operate it weekend after weekend. It is a massive cost without any crashes. So it's one of those things where we just don't have the support and sponsorship in place and partners that can enable us to fully stock up all these spares like we would ideally like to. And that's really the best thing, because then if something like this happens, it's not quite a rush and a mad dash to just, you know, push on all these people that, you know, hey, I need this stuff yesterday kind of thing. But uh, and that's what we're working towards next year. Obviously, we want to do this more often and we're looking to bring on sponsors that um, that we can not just, you know, represent at the racetrack and advertise for that can be involved with us. And, uh, you know, aside from getting a return from the marketing side, can be close to a super bike team and see all the technical stuff, because since we do practically everything in house, um, it's a good opportunity for for the people that we work with to actually be at the ground floor and see all the technical and work and, and workflow and processes that we go through. So. That's kind of what we're looking for. Maybe next year we can have enough of a, a support program that this is no big deal when this kind of thing happens. Obviously, it's not good, but we want to be in a position where if something like this happens, we've got three on the shelf and we can just throw stuff back together and replenish the spares in a normal time frame. So right now we're just waiting on stuff. We should have our cylinder head back tomorrow. Uh, it's going to be so close. And I honestly, I'm not really happy about that, but there's just nothing we can do. A lot of the parts that we need to get everything put back together are not going to be here until Tuesday of next week, which is basically the day before we're supposed to leave to go to Barber, which is our plan to race and superbike at Barber. So not really ideal. None of us like that kind of situation where you're just rushing. You know, we don't we don't mind pressure, but we want to make sure we have plenty of time to sort everything out. If there's an issue, that kind of stuff, we want to be able to work through it. So a few things are going to get here early. Luke at Cormoto has been awesome. He's uh, banging out some special parts to make the wheels that we order from him fit. Um, and uh, Nick at MSS has, has been amazing and getting us some of the key stuff that we really need um, over in the UK. We have a really cool fork that's on the way that I think might actually get here before our Olin's parts arrive. We might not even have time to rebuild the Olin's forks. Um, 
based on what I'm seeing so far. So that's not ideal, but we have another really good fork on the way that I think uh, we may run. I'm kind of excited about that. It's a very special one. So it's, yeah, it's stressful times around here. We're, uh, we're chipping away, but this video, unfortunately, we're just essentially providing you with an update. It's just me running my mouth essentially um, because we're just, we're playing the waiting game right now. But gives you an idea of where we are. I'm gonna go ahead and post this just so you guys kind of know where we're standing and, and kind of what to expect in the next video. Next one, we're gonna be getting a bunch of stuff in and we will begin the rebuild process. And our goal is also to make this motorcycle better than it was before the incident with our uh, with our cylinder head being serviced. Also got our vibratory finisher in. So we're gonna actually micro finish the stock gearbox, which is legal. That'll provide a little bit of a a mild performance gain and shifting and potential power. And uh, there's a few other odds and ends that I'm not gonna go into just yet, but there's some things that I think is gonna make the bike work really well. And we're gonna work to get all that stuff done before we leave on Wednesday. So clock's ticking, but I think that's gonna do it for this one. Uh, thank you guys for watching. We'll uh, see you next time. And we'll have a much more interesting update in this next video with a full rebuild of essentially a bare frame and all the Superbike stuff going back on. So thanks again, we'll see you next time.